I have been working on my flake for quite a while now. And one of the things I have kind of neglected to do is a video just talking about how you would go about installing it and the important things to know about. I've probably talked about this in some of my other videos about my flake or my NixOS configuration, whatever. I just haven't dedicated a sole video to walking you through the process. So that's what we're going to do now. I'm not going to be directly installing it on the system, but I am going to show you all of the important steps because it's quite simple. So I don't think you need a point by point breakdown. Let's hop over to my desktop. And when you get NixOS, you'll just go to a NixOS download page. And once you go here, you'll see that at the top, it'll say the package manager. We don't want that. We go down here to the NixOS Linux distribution, and you'll see they have downloads available for GNOME, Plasma, and also the minimal ISO, which doesn't come with a graphical user interface. GNOME is the recommended one because there's, there's more likelihood of you running into some kind of hardware issue with SDDM and Plasma. But for the most part, either one of these installers will work. It's just which desktop do you want for the actual install, uh, for, you know, bringing up the install program and choosing stuff. The desktop environment that you pick for the live ISO here is not the actual desktop that you're going to install on NixOS. It gives you an option. You'll have plenty of options for different desktop environments to install. So you'll just download one of the images here, write it to a USB drive, and then boot it. Very simple. You'll just go through the installer. Once you boot it, there will be a install program that should automatically pop up. If it doesn't, it'll be in the bar. It's, it's not hard to find at all, but just run through the install. It's a basic install. The only thing that you want to make sure you actually do have set up is UFI and GPT partition labels. So you want to be using UFI, GPT, and you'll be fine. Uh, and there's a page when you're selecting the hard drive or whatever, it'll say UFI, GPT, or MBR, BIOS, whatever, up in the top right, uh, top left and top right of that little section for your hard drive. So you'll see it. And that's pretty much it. As long as you're installing with UFI, divide up your partitions however you want. You know, choose the unfree. It doesn't really matter how you go through the install, just install it, choose to install whatever desktop you want. And then once you have a working system and you're, and it's all installed and you've booted into it, all you want to do to get my flake, it's quite simple. You're going to run a Nick shell, uh, command here and install Git and vim inside of your shell. And then you're going to Git clone my repo here. You're going to CD into it. And then you're going to stay inside of this folder for the rest of my configurations install. So after that, you also can switch over to the stable branch. I do have a stable branch and as time goes on, this will get updated. Maybe it'll be stable 1.1, whatever, but you can switch over to the stable branch with this git commit here, and that'll switch you over there. So if you want, rock solid stability with my config. You want to make sure that I haven't made any changes or new updates that might have broken something or like, you know, it's just an option you're not ready for like, you know, whatever. If, if you just want to be safe, you can go on the stable branch. And then, uh, here I do make a note, change any options in the options.nix as needed. So let's go over there. I also do have a wiki on here. You can see it in my right hand bar, but it's also referenced up here, read the wiki and you can click there and it'll take you to the wiki. The wiki, if you actually, I'll go ahead and go in there. The wiki does actually have, if we go down to setting options, it has all of the options that you're going to want to be set in that file here and explains what they do. But once you're inside of your options.nix file, which I am here inside of my Git repository, 
or the zany os folder where you are you're gonna you're gonna go in here change your username host name and then your waybar style if you want to you know right now i'm using the default we've got a slick one that's got the what you see in the picture on the uh readme with the like curved kind of uh, modules at the top of the bar if you want that you can change it out there we also have a simple bar uh, which is very basic so if you want if you don't want any like real nice looking stuff you just want the bare bare minimum you can go with that and then down in here you probably want to set up your git account so go ahead and do this if you don't have a git account i'd just go ahead and put your you know first and last name in there and then for your git username and then for your git email just put whatever email you're probably going to make a gitlab or github account with and you'll be set and then you can change the theme value here. This is any base 16 color scheme. Uh, again, on the wiki, I have a theming page. If you go there, you'll find the link to the repository that has all of the link, uh, all of the themes that you could put here. Um, and then we have border animation, so you can turn that on or off uh, for the moving colors around the window. If you turn it off, it'll just be the four colors and they'll sit there. They won't rotate like this. Some people find that distracting, so that's an option. Then change your default browser. If you want to, the wallpaper Git and Dirt. If you don't know anything about this and you don't know what this does, just move on past it. This is where it goes out and gets my wallpaper repo and downloads it and puts it into your pictures, uh, your slash, your users, pictures, wallpapers directory. If it doesn't exist, it creates it. And same thing with the screenshots directory here. Where it just where do you want your screenshots going, and then most of these other things down here you won't want to change except for the terminal uh if you want to i've already got three options down below for for installing westterm kitty and alacrity so you can just choose whichever one you want the hyperland key binding to load here and then we've got a whole bunch of system configuration stuff like whether or not you want a 24-hour clock in your bar or just on the system in general do you do you want you know which locale are you using time zone shell kernel all that kind of stuff is listed through here and then this is the important little section here that seems to mess up every single person here lately and i totally understand and i definitely need to find a better way of going about this on my system i'm using impermanence for running my system my my actual root nix system from a temp fs so it's all running on ram it gets persisted and loads into ram and this option here is enabled because well i'm using impermanence for you if you're just doing a regular nix os stall you're not trying to run stuff off temp fs and in your ram like set this to false you need to this file is not optional i mean you for me editing this file is optional if you're not me you should edit this file and what i've done with my project the whole idea of it is you should only have to edit this file and then your packages you can just add into either config home packages or config system packages and eventually i will i'm working on a script right now that will walk you through setting all of these options and also adding packages to either your user or the system and that way you won't have to even edit the files eventually but for now pretty much everything you're going to need to edit is inside of options.nix and when it comes to adding programs you'll go to those places that i just mentioned so we also have sdl video driver your cpu gpu type uh, this down here is only needed if you're running an Intel NVIDIA hybrid laptop. You put these values there. And um, I'll also on the README, I do have the guide for getting these values. So I recommend if you're running a hybrid laptop, just go to the wiki, read it. Um, and then again, we've got more settings down through here. You know, whether or not you want Flatpak enabled or installed. Do you want Caden Live installed? Do you want Blender installed? Do you want Logitech, you know, Logitech device support? all that stuff. So just go through the file, check out everything that's down through here, but that impermanence option needs to be set to false. If you're not running stuff from RAM 
on a temp FS like some of us are. I have a very small few people who are actually doing this and want it and like need it. Pretty much everyone else, you just set this to false and your system is going to be a okay, just fine. The thing is, I, I have had a lot of people ask me, why don't you just set this to false? Like, why is it defaulting to true? Zany OS is not an OS, really. It's my exact configuration. And on pretty much all of the computers I'm going to be using full, from this flake on a like kind of desktop laptop setting, I would like to be able to use TempFS. I've got I've got enough RAM for it on all my systems, so why not? I need to come up with a way of making this not so you have to change it and everything, but I'm kind of torn on how to go about this right now just because we have so much other stuff in this file that you're going to have to change. There's really no way of getting around it. I like I that that's where you're setting up uh any options specific to your system that you would need to. And uh, yeah, there's just really no way of getting around it right now, but I am going to try and do something where this here is way more noticeable because some people are just not seeing it and going from the stable and then just copying this command here, never even knowing that they need to change the option.next file. So, I'll probably improve the documentation to make that more noticeable and uh, point it out towards you. And then you'll just run this to install it. And when you copy this, just replace this entire thing here with the actual host name that you put inside of the flake uh, or excuse me, the options.next. So you're done. As soon as you run that, you're done. You'll be able to boot in and you should have a user with the password password. That's it. And there's right here is the commands for changing it. You run or you run this command, it will output something like this. And so you just copy this hashed password and put it into the file. Then you're good. Hope you boys maybe had a good time watching this. Uh, maybe you learned something and um, also maybe this can be helpful if you were planning on installing the flake and were a little confused about something. Maybe I clarified something useful. I don't know. Probably not. This video is probably just completely useless and soaking up YouTube's airwaves, but eh, whatever. We're going to try it. I do want to go ahead and thank all of you, these great people over here on Patreon for supporting me and helping me do this because I am giving out support for NixOS for free over on Discord. I'm doing paid support through Patreon. So if you, you know, want a one on one support, schedule some time to work together, all that stuff, there's support tiers over on Patreon. It's explained how those work. So you know, maybe go check it out if you're interested. And yeah, that's how I'm able to have a lot of free time to help out people work on, you know, projects other people need me to complete and also still get work done on Zany OS. So thank you, Zuski, Michael, Grizzlyware, D Dubs, Four, Dark Zero, Steve, Russell, Nate Pick, Forlorn Idealist, Zach, TGB, Papa Smurf, Willis, and Matt from the Linux cast. Thank you, boys.